Hello everyone, I hope you've had a good half term and I've been enjoying all the lovely sunshine. I'm back here with the next chapter of Hamish and the World Stoppers. It's getting quite exciting now. The invasion, the last flash, the last pause has begun and um, the pause walkers are putting the plan into action and uh, we left off when the um, World Stopper General arrived. Chapter 32 this is it. The very instant he had realised his error, Buster had clambered up the town clock and stuck a spanner on the clock face to stop the minute hand from moving any further. There, that should do it, and he knew precisely what to do next. He slid down again and jumped through the door of the ice cream van. He'd made a few modifications he was certain might come in handy. At the fairground, all was complete and utter insanity. It was chaos. Children were running everywhere, some of them banging spoons on tins and saucepans, while confused terribles spun around, trying to catch them and bumping into one another. Get em! yelled the World Stopper General, furious at this distraction. Crush em! Crack em! Hamish kept one eye on the crazed and flailing giant. It seemed panicky. Who's checking the time, it roared. Who's watching the clock? At the bottom of the roller coaster, three terribles tried desperately to scramble over one another, doing whatever they could to climb up the poles at the bottom. They couldn't understand why they kept sliding down. Quickly, Venk splurted out even more of the super slippy hygiene gel that was keeping the poles so slidey. We needs to see the clock, shouted the World Stopper General. Grab those winds and stop them. But the Terribles were no longer listening to their master. They had other things to deal with. Mexican foot stamp, screamed Granville in his element as a bunch of kids stamped on a Terrible's foot. Chinese tongue pull, that ridiculous beast. Through the middle of them, Elliot ran, squirting hot sauce from his dad's old aftershave bottle as Terribles spluttered and poured at their eye. What's the time? roared the, gen the World Stopper General, his exasperated spit now landing in huge great puddle clumps on the ground. Boom! came down one of his feet. Boom! down came the other. One terrible had now made it to the very top of the roller coaster and was peering out at the town clock, but it hadn't changed. It was just the same as when it as when they had started. Confused and confounded, it shrugged its angular shoulders and made a pained face at its boss. Check the frozen's watches then, yelled the world stopper general. We guess how long's we got. But every watch on every person showed a very different time. 4.13, 9.29, We's gonna retreat, shouted the World Stopper General, panicked and realising he was in no way prepared for this kind of organised revolution. We's gonna retreat! Hamish checked the Explorer, the only watch that showed the true time. He had to time this just right. He waited. He waited a moment more. Then, now, Clover, he shouted, go! And as a terrible brought the bugle to sound the screech of retreat, Clover flung off the incredible, re incredibly realistic bright green bush costume she had been hiding in all along and grabbed it. Alice, she shouted, catch! To the World Stopper General's horror, Clover threw it up, up in the air. The bugle spun and pirouetted and slapped straight into Alice's hand like she was catching a boomerang. She stared at it, stunned for a second. Go! shouted Hamish, tapping his watch. Run! But Alice did not move. It was like she was frozen. Now, Alice! shouted Hamish again. Go! But still, she just stared at the bugle. And now the World Stopper General, seeing exactly what was about to happen, began to stomp towards her. She looked up 
to see him approaching. Which is when Robin jumped in front of the World Stopper General and began to wave his arms. Hang on, Robin? It's 12.03, shouted Starkley's once most nervous kid. It's 9.15, it's half past June, it's 70 minutes to yesterday. It was enough to confuse the great beast for a second. What was this small boy banging on about? This child who stank of worms? He's buying time, thought Hamish, which is exactly what the world stoppers are running out of. Alice snapped out of it. Her face flipped from confusion to determination. She could do this. And as the World Stopper General lost patience and swatted Robin away and into the bouncy castle, Alice Shepherd ran like her life depended on it, which, to be honest, it did. She ran with amazing speed and dexterity. She ran between legs and jumped over long arms and tried to grab and that tried to grab and slap her to the ground. She leapt over spit puddles and slid through the mud and as she reached the end of the fairground, the starkly under 12's 100 metre champion did everything she could to escape the clutches of the fearsome, fearsome furious world stopper general now crashing and roaring behind her. Next to a sign marked Farmer Jama's private property, she slid to a halt. Hamish told her his hunch. He'd better be right about this. And just when World, when World Stopper General's enormous grasping hands were so almost upon her, Alice Shepherd heaved the great shell-like bugle right into the vast swaying field of sunflowers at the fairground's edge. No! bellowed the World Stopper General. The bugle is amongst the fun flowers. Retreats! Retreats! Flash! Boom, 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 boom! Fireworks, explosions overhead. Hamish stood alone, lit by flashes of green and red and blue, smiling at his explorer. They'd done it. The pause was over. The noise and colour picked up exactly where it left off, with the kind of huge, full explosions you could feel right there in your chest. The brilliant flashes from above were like strobe lights capturing split seconds of life like a camera flash. On the ground, you just couldn't tell who was still and who was moving. Hamish looked around him cautiously. The people of Starkley all stared up at the sky as the fireworks reached their powerful finale. The terrible seemed still too. But were they? And as the final boom echoed and bounced around the buildings of Starkley, there was a smattering of appreciative applause as thick smoke drifted across the fair. And then there was nothing. But as the smoke began to clear, the screams began. What the heck are they? yelled one man, tripping over himself as he ran. Tripping over himself as he ran. Monsters! screamed another. Look at the size of it! shrieked a woman, pointing at the World Stopper General, who towered over the town, blank-eyed and unmoving. Oh my goodness, screamed Mr Ram's face, the smell of meanness now apparently broken. Oh my goodness! The screaming continued as the grown-ups began to run from the fair, every now and again slapping into another, into another stopped, slimy terrible and screaming louder still. The screams of terror were soon joined by the mighty cheers of the pause walkers. They had stopped them. They had stopped the stoppers. They were the stopper-stoppers. Hamish looked at Alice triumphantly. They're frozen, he said, poking one finger up a terrible's jelly-like nostril. There was now just one thing left to do. And we'll find out what that is in the next instalment. Bye.